Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. It's a video of um, Douglas Murray revealing some of the problem and issues currently facing in the UK. And so if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, without any further that I do let's get down to this video and check this out so just just people think about this for a second the government refuses to do what the public keep on asking for and what the government keeps on saying it'll do it is seen to be I think accurately extremely lax on policing certain social cohesion issues it's extremely eager to crack down on any one of a Tommy Robinson type. And what material benefits have come about in the society in the last 16 years have largely gone to people who were not born in the country. What, I, I, I repeat, what, what, is, what is permissible in this situation to do? And I would say peaceful protesting would be one thing, or speaking up, or you know, whatever you like to do, except that every time even there is a peaceful protest, the peaceful protesters are defamed as far right. But somehow, the, the actual desire to tar anyone who has, as I say, not got a voice and is wanting to make their voice heard as, you know, as, as a violent far right seems to me to be a big error by Keir Starmer and others, because you know, if you can't say, we recognize your deep, deep concerns, or we understand your deep, deep concerns, and we are going to try to get onto this and on top of this, but there is no excuse to turn out on the streets and be violent against your Muslim brothers and sisters and neighbors or anyone else. If they can't say that, they just cannot say it. They just have to go to the secondary thing. What kills me about this is, it's exactly what I've said for years. If you don't deal with a primary problem, you get secondary problems. And if you just focus on the secondary problem, you will never, not, you'll not only not solve the primary problem, you will make it worse. The first observation is that the epithet far right is rapidly losing its utility. Like when I hear someone now described as far right, I think, yeah, maybe, probably not but maybe. So with regards to the drivers of immigration, you know, you say the politicians campaign, at least on the conservative side, at least some of the time with the claim that they're going to get a handle on this, but they don't. In fact, quite the opposite, they seem to facilitate it. And so then is that because it's actually beyond their control? Or is it because here's a psychological reason? It's like, for decades, our culture has insisted on something approximating a position of moral relativism. There's no way of drawing hierarchical distinctions between the value claims that different cultures present. We can't admit for a moment that there might be some reason to be um, leery, let's say, of an immigrant class that would be associated with the kind of education that the madrasas are producing for all sorts of ideological reasons. We can't make any allowance for the idea that some immigrants might be more difficult to integrate into our culture than others. And that is a thorny problem. Don't get me wrong. But now, so we open the floodgates, let's say, and we find out that there are people who don't have democracies in their own country because they don't have the culture for it, let's say, or the desire for it. And they bring those attitudes along with them. Surprise, surprise, because they weren't just freedom-loving, oppressed people striving to be free, who are now thrilled to death to be in a democratic country, but people who are pretty damn prone to bring all of the problems that they had in their own country along with them. Now, and we're not supposed to say that. Now, my sense is the working class doesn't get to have their say, because if they had their say, everyone who's modern and liberal and tolerant in that pathological manner that accepts everything without distinction would have to do some serious digging into the under structure of their own belief systems and think oh well and then that touches on something else so the first the question first is like what the hell's driving 
the massive immigration into the West, because we see it in Canada, maybe worse than anywhere else at the moment, or more at a more rapid rate than anywhere else. Canada is so damn peaceful, it's hard to destabilize it, but we're working hard on that. So, so what's driving this? Matt, is it the insistence? Is it this ideological insistence? It's a lot of things. The one is, as I've warned about for a long time, the one is something that isn't inevitable, but is hard to resist, which is the simple ease of movement in the 21st century, the relative cheapness of travel compared to any previous century, and the knowledge through the devices we have in our pockets around the globe. I mean, what, three, three billion people are on WhatsApp alone. Um, the ability of people anywhere in the world to discover the life of anyone else in the world easily. Uh, and add to that the fact that most countries in the world are not even remotely approximating either the safety or the wealth uh, available in 21st century Canada, for instance, or Britain. And, you, and it's inevitable that a lot of people will want that. Now, as I've said for years, just because they may want it, does not mean that Western liberal democracies can remotely be the place where everybody who wants a better life can or should go. It's, it's simply impossible. Uh, and you just crunch the numbers on people in sub-Saharan Africa who want to move into Europe, for instance. And if that happened, if the third of sub-Saharan Africa who, who want to move moved, Europe would be totally unrecognizable. Now, the, 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 the second thing that comes from that is that it is extremely difficult for politicians to maintain their borders. And I think this is highly regrettable because I think the only way in which, among other things, you can have an actual asylum system where you actually take in those unusual cases uh, where asylum should be uh, needed, uh, just disappear once you have illegal migration every day coming in on boats, or as in the case of America, millions of people walking across the southern border in the last four years. And add to that the fact that, as has been, as was famously said in 1968 by somebody, uh, it's the easiest thing to put off any difficult decision you have to make today and leave it for your successors to address, all the time making it harder for your successors. But I said this to a European politician some years ago when they said that they were going to deport the million illegals that were in their country. I said, how are you going to do it? Because you and I know that on day one, if you rounded up everyone who is legally in the country, put them on what, buses, trains, boats, the first woman or child crying would be on the front page of every newspaper the next morning, and by day two you would have to stop because of public pressure. Um, that, that's just, it seems to be a reality for the time being. By the way, until such a time emerges, and it could, where, where the society says we don't give a damn anymore, we don't give a damn. That may, that may well happen. But until that does happen, you know, countries are absolutely incapable. Politicians are incapable of answering this question. Then you have, then you have a follow on one, which addresses what you mentioned about Richard Dawkins, among other things, which is, um, America, it's not quite true to say that America was a society based on an idea, but it's a nice idea. Um, America was based on an idea, but the idea came about because of the people who founded um, the, the Republic, the United States of America. And if they had... Englishmen. Right. If they had have been from somewhere else, even a different denomination, the United States would be very different. However, as far as states founded on an idea goes, America is probably the most... the nearest to that. European nations, Britain, are not based on an idea. They were not based on an idea. Now, that isn't to say that they don't have very distinct cultures. And my word, the different cultures across Europe are so different that everyone jokes about their neighbors and regards their neighbor in the neighboring European country as being wildly different from them. To an outsider, it seems preposterous that the Swedes and the Norwegians would have distinctions between them, but they do. But, but I say this to say that uh, Eur Europe and Britain was made up of ethnic identities. And those ethnic identities had ideas, of course. But even in Britain, you have the Welsh, you have the Scots, you have the English, the Northern Irish, the Irish. Um, how do you integrate into that? How do you do it? 
Um, does anyone know? And the answer is no. Have some people? I'd say yes. Um, have a majority? It doesn't look that way to me. Um, and, and so, so this is, this is, this is just a bomb underneath the societies in Europe in particular. It's, 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 it has been about ethnicity. We don't like things about being about ethnicity. So we say it's about an idea. But all my adult life, this idea has been so hard for anyone to pin down that they've just failed at it time and time again. I think that if they said that I am from Britain, then there should be something that differentiates me from someone from Africa, Asia, and the rest of the continent, right? And then if, for instance, we go to Africa, there is something that should differentiate me a Nigerian from an Egyptian and then also from a somebody from Morocco, right? That is what their culture and then the foundation in which in a sense they are being built these are the some of the things that differentiate us that is the reason why you can say oh this is an african this is a white man this is a black man you know that kind of a thing when you see some of these things in a sense happening in a sense in the europe is it that europe no longer want their identity anymore or is there anything wrong for somebody to say that, look, I want to preserve, you understand, my culture. I want to preserve my identity. Is that supposed to be a problem? And if somebody feels that, no, look, I have right, in a sense, to preserve my identity, then why should that be a problem? And that is the reason why I have always said that there is a need for people to learn to be tolerant and then ability to be able to integrate into one society especially when you are visiting now people migrate in a sense into britain and then end up in a sense bringing their cultural beliefs their religion into europe and then therefore causing problems and then forgetting the fact that in the process of trying to do that there are some people that will object whatever you are trying to do and then when they object and then it becomes what a problem and then that is the reason why you see some of this european or should i say britain precisely is having problem with a lot of muslim immigrant why is it that they do not have problems with the ukrainian immigrant for instance but why is it that they have a problem precisely the muslims it's because of why different in religious belief because of both religion and doesn't have different foundation in which they are built so you don't expect to fuse both and then they expect a better result no it's not going to be like that and then that's why what douglas has been warning and been advocating you understand that this is the dangers of allowing illegal immigrant into britain because as they go there and then they are there of course they want to practice their religion they want to practice their culture they want to support what is really going on between um, israel and the palace and even though that tend to divide so many nations so are we going to shy away that some of these problems in a sense are not there no they are there and we have to fix them if we do not fix them these are they keep degenerating and then it keep on you know some becoming more problem and more problem you know some for everyone and it's making the world not a safer place and then that's the reason why we are saying that what well, look people need to learn how to what, to integrate into one society when you are find yourself in one society please don't try to change the person you can only advise the person i understand that no culture is kind of static is dynamic and then since it is dynamic you don't kind of force or impose some of these things in a sense on the people we know that iran are doing very well economically kuwait are doing very well economically Saudi Arabia are doing well economically. Turkey is doing very well. Qatar is doing very well. And some of these countries. So, if we look at, in a sense, some of the respective countries that they are having, in a sense, some of these problems. We talk about maybe probably Iran, Palestine, and some of these countries. Yemen and the rest. Or Pakistan, Afghanistan. So, I was saying that, why not 
some of these people should rather go to those respective Islamic countries. Isn't it going to be easier for them to, you know, live with them because of why they are same Muslim, same values and all those. So why not they just migrate instead of coming to Europe? Because this is a situation whereby you are coming to Europe and then the Europe in the other way around, they don't even want you. So why forcing yourself to go to a place that you are not needed? But then I just first like, why not they should just go to Iran? Why not they go to Saudi Arabia? Why not they go to Qatar? Why not you know, to go to some of these countries? Because they are doing very well economically. They are doing very well. And they are places that people want to even go there for vacation, tourism, and all those things. So why not you go there instead of trying to go to Europe? For me, I would say that if you do not love you understand, Britain, then you have no right of being in Britain. Therefore, you are supposed to be deported back to your country. Because if you do not love Britain, then why are you there? Why are you there in a sense to cause problems? So what are you now doing there? So if you do not love Britain, therefore they should what deport you back to your country. Then when you are at your country, you can go on and then continue with your demonstration, continue with your riot, continue with your protest, but you can't be in Britain and then cause national security in a sense to the citizen, causes fear, impose your religion on them and see you can't be in a certain bit you can't be in britain you can't be in you can't be in britain refuse to integrate bring your religion your culture and impose it in a sense on the people and desecrate in a sense their places in a sense on worship and then you want them to sit down and then watch you in a sense doing some of these things and then when i talk and then some people who says that why not i should be saying it in a sense in my country some people will say that some people who says that I'm Islamophobic. If Britain, you understand, is in chaos, who would like to visit Britain again? Who would want to be there? Why do you want to turn it, you understand, to a places of chaos? And that is what, you understand, I'm against. I'm not against Islam. I'm not against, you understand, um, I'm not against, you understand, Islam. I'm not against of peace loving you know, some people, but I'm, I'm against people you know, who want to cause problems you know, for everyone. Because if Britain is not peaceful, if UK is not peaceful, who will want to be there? Nobody will want to be there. I will not like to visit there. My family will not like to live there. And that is the reason why I'm against you know, some people who don't want peace you know, some to reign. But then I know that a lot of you have thought an opinion and a lot will disagree with me. A lot of people are even insulting me. I will still see more at the comment session. Till then, I may God bless you.